Welcome to our first episode of the Steadfast Soul podcast. In this podcast, we will, inshallah, be exploring different topics such as tests and trials, discipline, guilt and sin, and death. Since this is the Steadfast Soul podcast, it's appropriate that we start our discussion with steadfastness. So, without further ado, my name is Ali Forza, and on December 1st, I declared my shikata in Granada, Spain. I have been studying Islam since I was an undergrad and have the pleasure of meeting Harris online through the X platform. Harris, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So um, my name is Harris and I define myself as just a guy. Um, <laughs> I don't have any specific qualifications or kind of anything like that. The I just have a, an interest in trying to help Muslims be as good as they can uh, and have a particular view of the world people disagree with it and doesn't bother me it's fine but yeah so i've been teaching in the community for nearly 15 years now so it's given me a real insight as to the problems and the struggles the communities face and i want to try provide some solutions inshallah that's inshallah. awesome yeah okay cool so steadfastness we should sure. probably start with the definition yeah the um Webster's Dictionary, uh, or at least the dictionary.com yeah. on, on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so definition for steadfast, adjective, fixed in direction, steadily directed, firm in purpose, resolution, faith, unwavering as resolution, faith adherence, firmly established as an institution or a state of affairs, firmly fi fixed in a s place or position. Yeah. And I, I think that pretty much sums up what the Islamic kind of perception of steadfastness is. Staying in a fixed position. Yeah. But I think it's, it's about staying, it's about staying the course. It's yeah. about um, resilience in the mm. face of adversity and right from Surah Fati actually. Um, when we ask Allah to guide us upon the Sirat al Mustaqim, one of the mm. um, the word Mustaqim often it gets translated as kind of like straight or righteous, um, but one of its other kind of meanings, other meanings is like established or mm. kind of uh, like straight or kind of this idea of kind of steadfastness, as in the idea is that we stay upon this path that is um, established. And we do our best to kind of stay on it to the best of our ability. So mm -hmm. at least 17 times a day, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay on this path. And by definition, therefore, to stay f steadfast. Because losing your steadfastness is probably the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Which is why we constantly need to ask for help on it. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how quickly things pop up and then things can go wayward, unfortunately. Yeah. So, and I think that's one of the things I love about Islam as well is that you're constantly throughout the day um, recentering yourself, you know, into your prayer mat and just like, okay, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. So, well, if, if you look at how, pop up. yeah, well, I mean, if you look at how like, our day as a Muslim is designed. It's designed that you are going to be in and out. It's designed to kind of... Allah SWT knows that you're not... And nor does he intend for us to kind of stay on a prayer mat 24-7 or be reading Quran 24-7 or be kind of like in this zone 24-7. Like um, monkish is, uh, monkishness or monkism isn't like part of our religion. Like there mm -hmm. are periods of time where you can isolate yourself, but we disagree with this idea of having a permanent kind of uh, isolated living. That's not how we're meant to live. We're mm -hmm. meant to live, earn, get married, enjoy ourselves, have fun. That's all part of um, who we are as a, uh, uh, as, as a faith, but it's about doing so in a direction um, and then staying on that direction to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a hadith actually that comes to mind where the Prophet drew a line on the sand and then drew several other lines kind of intersecting it that were perpendicular to it. 
and he said that the line is basically you going from birth to death and it's this linear direction and then um these perpendicular lines are distractions where you stray mm -hmm. away and the successful believer is the one that can kind of get from end to end without straying too far from mm -hmm. the path and whenever you do stray it's about realigning right and like to be a math nerd for a second um <laughs> <laughs> when you have a uh, an angled line mm -hmm. um and a straight line in the beginning the angle the, the angle is quite small so the distance between the two lines is quite small mm -hmm. but the further along you go in that path that started off as a small angle the distance between the two lines increases so mm -hmm. the idea is that if you carry on pursuing that path where you're going astray without realigning yourself you the gap is larger and therefore you have to work harder to get back to the straight and narrow uh, right. so mm -hmm. so yeah that, that's why steadfastness is such an important aspect of the religion yeah alhamdulillah that's a very good analogy actually or an example i guess yeah. diagram um because yeah the further you stray you know i posted something on x you know a couple a couple of fridays ago fridays is a big day for me because i used to be a bartender so <laughs> i'm really well aware of like oh friday is like and it also interestingly of course it's juma as well so i get to be like oh wow this is such a such a contrast to how i used to spend my fridays and um I think it was um, Timothy Winter or Sheikh, um, what's his name? He's in uh, Abdul Hakim Marad. That's right. That's right. That's right. He um, is a quote by him basically saying the further we are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the further we do things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the mm -hmm. further we are from, no, that, that's not the right, let me, let me do this. Let me edit that out. But let me see if I can find that. It's a really, um, interesting um quote because it reminds me i mean when you're if you're out partying or out you know you slip up and you're out doing things that you you know you know you sh shouldn't do it's at that moment you realize you're like oh i am so far from where i'm supposed to be mm -hmm. you know and um here we go only when distant from god do we crave what is distant from god mm. sheikh abdul hakim murad Wow, that's that's incredible, and it's like, it's that the word that you're reminded of is loving what Allah loves and hates what Allah hates, and right. the more you love what Allah loves, the easier it is for you to love what Allah loves, and the more you um, love what Allah hates, the harder it is for you to hate what Allah loves. Um, right. So, so the idea is that, and we've talked about this before, like um, badness breeds badness and when you're usually caught up in one as some one bad aspect of life you're usually caught up in other bad bad aspects of life and i guess the whole idea of steadfastness is acknowledging that i made a mistake and then doing your best to realign yourself yeah right 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 and also i think that's really where community comes in as well you know if you're out of five people and you're the only muslim well chances are you're going to do things that you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, and if you are, you know, you know, four Muslims and one non-Muslim, that person is a higher chance of converting or reverting um, mm -hmm. to Islam because all his friends is like, well, we're going to go to the, the masjid. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, well, I guess I'll just come with you or yeah. just wait outside. Like that's, that's unlikely to happen. Um, and yeah, well, there's a, there's a colloquial saying, not sure if it's a hadith or just a saying of the scholars, but they say, um, you are upon the deen of your friends, as in, like, mm, whatever, yeah. whatever your social group looks like, whatever their priorities are, will be your priorities because that's why you're friends with them. Because you won't be friends with them otherwise, right? Right. And <laughs> very rarely have I seen a practicing friend amongst who regularly spends time with a group of non practicing people right. and him stay practicing either he leaves the group right. or he like his level of practice diminishes um right. so it's it's kind of like yes you're, you're right in what you say in terms of that's where community and building relationships with yep. teachers and scholars and mm -hmm. people who can advise you um is so important and the idea of friends is 
not just people who you enjoy spending time with or enjoy talking to. It's the Islamic definition of a friend is, and I'll probably be another episode, but the Islamic definition of a friend is someone who can help you, correct you, and isn't afraid to say, do you know what, this isn't good for you. Um, uh, so I think it's really important in terms of trying to stay steadfast, to surround yourself with good company mm -hmm. and good people who will at the very least not encourage you to do the wrong thing right and they want you know other muslims want the best for you and so and i think you know i think for women at least you know i don't mind being corrected but it's it's not what you're saying it's how you're saying it i think is kind of a funny thing so i think for even in the comments you know on youtube it's like it's so hard to get content like how are they what's the emotion here and so i think when people are nice and and you can feel that warmness, but when you are correcting somebody on every video or every post that you do, it sort of gets a little tiring. You're like, okay, I got it. Like I understand. And it's like trying to remember that it's not only what you say, but in the way that you say it as well, because okay. I think at least for me, you know, as being a sensitive person, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, and also expecting the, you know, we've talked about this before Harris, but like um, the, expectation that people not only want the best for you, but they also um, give them the benefit of the doubt, right? So if you, just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's not there or that it's not happening or that it's not part of their everyday life or what they're thinking about, you know, people have a very rich inner world that I think a lot of people forget that they think, oh, that's my, only my, that's, I'm only like this. No, we're all like that. We all have a rich inner world and we're all thinking about these, these, you know, topics all the time. So, um, especially for reverts, I think is, is, I mean, not especially, but also reverts as well. Yeah. So. Well, I think the, 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 the struggle with the, with reverts is, um, the lack of kind of, uh, overall, uh, staying, figuring out how to do things with a plan. Mm. Um, because, like, if you speak to any kind of, like, athlete or kind of somebody who wants to struggle, you need to have a plan. You need to have a kind of way of being able to f figure out how you want to achieve the objectives that you want to achieve. Right. And I think sometimes reverts fall into this issue of... Um, but they fall into the trap of wanting to do everything and not <laughs> figuring out how to... <laughs> right, right, uh, right. It's yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, that you are so enthusiastic at the beginning that you want to do everything, and then when you don't do everything, or you start to let other practices slip, or like you're not doing um, the Sunna prayers, you're like, oh, I'm not, like, I'm not a good Muslim. Like I need to be doing this, and it's like, okay, hold on a bit. Like, you know, you're on your first week. Like, chill out. You know, <laughs> and but it is. It's like you, you know, you want to do it because you're like, I. This is like such a. It's such a. Um, a beautiful thing when you are able to finally become the person that you want to be, or at least move into the direction of where you want to be or who you want to be. And I think that um, being steadfast is also knowing when maybe it's, maybe, you know, it's the middle path, right? So it's like, maybe it's too much here. Maybe I'm being, maybe I should cut myself some slack a little bit and be like, okay, let's try and do the sooner prayers as well. But if it doesn't happen, don't beat yourself up about it because then you just feel like, well, what's the point anyway, or whatever you're the way you, you know, deal with that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, if somebody said in the comments of my YouTube channel it was said, um, extremism is easy, but the middle road, like the, the middle path is the hardest. And yeah. because you, you know, so I think that's something to think well, about. Yeah. Well. There's the, um, there's the popular I have from Surah Bakra where Allah SWT says that I created you as the middle ummah. And, right. and it's, it's kind of like we are a uh, a religion of moderation, like nothing is asked to be done in the extreme. Right. And I think the way you stay steadfast is having um, achievable goals that you mm -hmm. improve upon with a plan and steadily as opposed to trying to radically change every aspect of your life like i speak with a lot of people who are like trying to make become better muslims and wanting to improve themselves and the the number one advice i give them which seems contrary to what you 
should be doing is to take it one step at a time. Yeah. And so, for example, like the Salah is probably the main one that I talk to people about. And it's probably the biggest challenge for most Muslims mm. is to focus on one of them that you can achieve um, within your current lifestyle mm. uh, manageably and then commit to it and then make it make it firm, make it part of your regular routine and then build in the other ones. Because that way, A, you're building a habit. Mm-hmm. B, you're doing something that's manageable. Okay. Uh, but but most importantly, you're not going to overwhelm yourself too quickly. Now, that said, with a word of caution of don't just uh, kind of be okay with just doing that, which right. is, which you shouldn't be doing. But as long as your intention is to improve and to adopt every aspect of what you're trying to do, I, in this case, the five times a lot, starting with one and building up is actually the recommended way to do it. Interesting. Um, yeah. Hmm. The uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting um, there's a hadith from Aisha Adana where hmm. she talks about how if uh, alcohol was banned straight away in Islam, non nobody would have been Muslim. And hmm. if the same hadith mentions that if fornication would have been banned straight away, then nobody would have uh, been Muslim um, hmm. because uh, alcohol was gradually made haram. First, it was like. Uh, don't um, don't be drunk uh, when uh, praying in the masjid. Then it was like, don't be drunk for salah. Then it was like, okay, like now alcohol has been banned. Oh, and I the know. idea is that there's this gradual improvement mm-hmm. in easily adoptable steps, but still with a plan mm-hmm. to kind of get to a particular point. Right. But Aisha then has point is that by going through this gradual kind of process, a you it's easier for you. Mm-hmm. And B, you're able to remain committed to that thing for a longer period of time without right. having to think about, without having to overly stress yourself or overly exert yourself. Um, it's interesting that you brought up alcohol specifically because um, the also if you quit, if you're a drinker and you quit alcohol straight away, you can die technically and so i mean people have died right if you go cold turkey a lot of people have because of the alcohol the shock poisoning the the shock of of quitting right away and your body yeah it's really interesting um and terrifying at the same time um so yeah and not that i'm advocating for anybody to (laughs) to slowly because the problem with alcohol specifically as a former bartender i can attest to this is if you stop right away it's great but all of a sudden it's you know, something bad happens you're like oh okay let's have a drink it's like that's but if you wean yourself off like you okay. wean yourself off of caffeine before ramadan you don't have a screeching headache the first three days of ramadan you know um if you can wean yourself off and i know that's very very difficult especially when it comes to alcohol um but it is it reminded me um the hadith um that our beloved prophet peace and blessings be upon him had said oh. Um, the most beloved of deeds to Allah are those that are most consistent, even if it is small. Mm-hmm. And that's Bukhari 6464, book yeah. 81, Hadith 53. Yeah, that's that Hadith typifies the idea of steadfastness so much because yeah. it's a case of just um, this idea of just doing something regularly, doing something yeah. that you're going to be able to commit to, even if it's small. They, um, they, they, they use the example in like um, geology where if you just dump a bucket of water on a rock nothing will happen to it but if you have like Whoa. a small drip on a rock that lasts for like centuries years, eventually yeah. it'll create a mm-hmm. hole um and and that's what being steadfast is, ab- is about it's not mm-hmm. about just kind of okay this weekend i'm gonna this week upcoming week i'm gonna keep i'm gonna fast every single day i'm gonna pray the hundred every single night I'm going to mm. run all day long, and then I'm going to be good Muslim. Like, <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, it's it's un, it's impossible to attain. Yeah, and it's also just not. It's just not. It's you have to have set. I mean, as somebody who was a social worker, and you are in the helping services as well, profession as well. It's like you have to have goals that are attainable, and which is why I like your idea of just doing. Okay, let's is Isha possible okay let's stick with that and then you know i'll never miss i'll never miss it i'll never miss it and then oh well, okay well let's move back and let's do maghrib okay that's even actually that's easy that's doable people need goals that are easily attained yeah. just how to reach so you're like okay this is a struggle but i'm still getting there i'm still doing it and then you feel like well i'm actually do i can actually do this yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's one of those um 
areas of understanding where the more you understand it and the more you realize how important it is as a Muslim, um, the easier it is for you to adopt. And it's important. And one of the other reasons why it's important and can't, and its importance can't be understated is because uh, death can come to us at any time. Mm. So mm. you can't take a day off or you can't be at least content with taking a day off saying, oh, do you know what? I'll, I'll do you want, let me just have this one week where I'm going to have loads of fun. And oh, then gosh. a week, a week later, a week later, <laughs> I'm going to kind of, <laughs> kind of, uh, um, kind of come back in line because nobody guaranteed that person that they're going to make it that week. That's right. And also, I mean, I cannot tell you if I had a dollar for every time a customer came, Ali, you know, Monday, I'm going to quit drinking. I'll, you'll <laughs> never see me again. You'll never see me again. I would be, you know, in Dubai right now because I would have so much money. Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah. But because it's it's not, it's not, I mean, you have, and also most of these people have friends that are also at the bar, hanging out at the bar all sure, the time. Sure. So um, surrounding yourself, which goes back to our original point is surrounding yourself. And that's the why community is so important and why I think reverts a lot of times feel a little bit isolated from the rest of the community because it's very, very hard for us to find um, um, sisters and brothers that are, yeah, they're able to, you know, people are busy with their own lives for sure. Um, but knowing that, um, you and know, that's, and that's the, the community. thing about kind of uh, like trying to, overly exert yourself or trying to commit to this huge lifestyle change whereas like you still need to work you still got bills to pay you still got yeah. kind of the everyday life loving part of your soul to that needs quenching you've still got mm -hmm. a, a family to support or spend time mm -hmm. with you've still got all these other commitments so you can't be like well i'm just going to live myself as a monk and then it's like well no you've got a, a wife or a husband or you've got <laughs> uh, a family to support for you got you got work to do right so it's kind of like that's never been uh that was never set as an aspiration for any of the muslims amongst the time of the prophet where it's like mm -hmm. there was a small pocket of people who were kind of dedicated to kind of learning and teaching and they mm -hmm. lived in the church, but it's like they were a very very small pocket of people and they probably the they were probably at an age where they didn't have a family yet yeah or yeah. like they were travelers so they didn't have any commitments, commitments. Um, Whereas the ma the majority of them, like the majority of the the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu were just kind of everyday people, and e and and there's even a, a, a narration where someone came up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, "I'm going to do nothing more and nothing less than pray five times a day, um, avoid alcohol, and uh, avoid fornication." I think, and he says, "Is that enough for me to get into Jannah?" Um, and he, the Prophet said yes, and he walked away. And the Prophet said that is a person of Jannah. Like the fact mm -hmm. that he oh, recognized that. Do you know what? I'm not going to be able to do everything. I'm just going to do the small That's right. bit. That's right. But, but the Prophet asked him, like, "Are you going to commit to this?" And he said, "Yeah, I will." Mm -hmm. And then he kind of like, and the Prophet said, "Yep, that guy's going to Jannah." So, not that, that that's the level that we should aim for. Of course, of course. But just have a recognition of yeah. what is it that I can possibly like, what is it that I can reasonably commit to mm -hmm. and then commit to it. And then what you'll find is when you've committed to that thing and you're able to find it easy, you can do more like for people yeah. who like, I don't like who, who run or like w work out the, in the beginning, you lift a small weight and then you mm -hmm. lift it a few times and then you go for a few weeks and then you realize, Oh, hang on. This small weight is now easy. Let me increase yeah. it. And then you get more benefit and more benefit and more benefit. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's the idea that we adopt with Islam in terms of figuring out the small thing we can do, adopt it regularly, achieve it, realize the benefit, and then start to push yourself. That's correct, yeah. And I also think trusting the process, but also that knowing yourself, like that's a really good example. It's like a lot of people are, for some reason, they think, well, I can do everything or I can do nothing. There's no mm -hmm. middle ground. And it's like, no, you can do, you know, we can do hard things. We can do hard things. We can push ourselves. But I can understand the the idea of pushing yourself too much and then getting burnt out really, really quickly, yeah. especially, well, yeah. Well, Allah says in the ground that I don't mm -hmm. burden anybody with a burden that they can't handle. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the kind of uh, meanings of that verse as well as what the scholars say is that 
every test that is presented to us, we have the capability of passing. Right. Whether we whether we pass it or not is that's up to us. <laughs> in terms of the ability to be able to pass that test, mm -hmm. um, we all have that capability. So mm -hmm. when it comes to like, I'll, like I'll use hijab for example. Like a lot of mm -hmm. women struggle with like, oh well, I'm too sure. I don't think I can do it. It's like, too. Oh, well, well, I wouldn't have mandated it mm -hmm. if he didn't think that you were capable of doing that. Right. 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 Like, whether it's hard or not isn't the question. The question is, no. are you capable? And mm -hmm. Allah wouldn't have um, made a law of that ilk if he didn't think that we were capable of delivering it. Right, right, um, right. The same way how when when the Prophet did the uh, ascension to the heavens during right. Ramadan, mm -hmm. and he has the conversation with Musa Islam about, I've been mandated to do 50 prayers, and Musa oh, Islam right. so, but that's too many and he goes back and he goes back um and it goes all the way down to five and musa -Islam said that's still too much and the prophet saw some said i'm embarrassed to go back again yeah i'm not doing it <laughs> yeah those five prayers wouldn't have been mandated mm -hmm. if we weren't capable of doing them that's right that's so right. it's not that it's not a struggle it's yeah it's a struggle but you can and i think that's the a reality that muslims need to accept that there is nothing in our deen where we don't have the capability of doing it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And I think it's, yeah, I mean, people say, well, how can you do that five times a day? It's like, it, it actually, I mean, I know it's different for everybody, obviously. We all have our own struggles. But if it's if you can commit to it, uh, I think the, the reward is immense, inshallah. So you'll see it in your everyday life, the, the rewards, yeah. Um, so one of the things we were talking about earlier prepping for this episode was filtering media consumption. That's in um, little things, this whole idea of little habits um, starting to build up bigger and bigger yeah. rewards. Yeah. So like, I think that how those little habits or those little actions relate to steadfastness is if you think about when you pierce a, um, a piece of paper with a pencil, it, originally it creates a very, very small hole. Mm. But then if you keep stabbing that piece of paper with that pencil, the hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Um, and then eventually you can kind of like twist it around and it gets and it gets really big. So the idea is that that piece of paper is your protection against the shaitan and kind of mm. um, bad deeds. And when you pierce it with that hole that's very small, your kind of susceptibility to the shaitan and to commit bad deeds is very, very small. Right. But the more you do those bad deeds, your susceptibility mm. increases and increases and increases to the point where it's not an effort anymore. <laughs> so the the idea of steadfastness is that recognizing that as soon as that um, hole has been pierced, you try, do your best to kind of patch over it and fix it to give you the fortitude to be able to resist and i think what a lot of muslims uh fail to grasp is that those small little holes eventually lead to really really big holes yeah. um so yeah um I, I think being careful about how you consume media and what you're consuming and mm -hmm. recognizing that what i consume will have an impact on my heart regardless of how small I think it is is, yeah. um, is is something that all Muslims need to be aware of. Yeah, and I think social media really warps our sense of um, <laughs> what is is okay and what is not. I mean, I saw this beautiful video the other day on on um, Instagram, but it had the worst soundtrack I'd ever heard in my life. <laughs> and even I, I went through the comments to see, I'm like, am I the only one that's like horrified? And it, they were talking about religion and Islam specifically, but it was it was just, it was really um, like rap inspired. And I thought, you know what, this is, um, I don't think this is okay. And I know music is sort of a, an issue in, in the Muslim community, but um, yeah, the lyrics were just, and, and people were commenting like, this is a terrible video. Like th the message is there, but the way that they're delivering that message, maybe that goes back to my other comment before, but is that, you know, we have to be mindful of the media, the, the media that we're putting out as well. I mean, that's, we are responsible for that as well. 
So um, um, even if you like the song, okay, but also, yeah. And I don't know if that music is even okay anyway. It's it's, it's a very sort of um, yeah. strange, yes, yeah, it was strange. The, 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 way I, the way someone explained it to me once was um, that your heart is like a jug. And mm. whatever you pour into that jug is what you can pour out of it. So mm. if you pour water into a jug, water will come out. If you pour juice into a jug, um, juice will come out. You can't pour water into a jug and then expect juice to come out. Yeah. So your output as a Muslim in terms of uh, what you say, what you do, how you practice your mm -hmm. commitment to the religion is a direct consequence of mm -hmm. what you consumed. Yeah. So if you're going to consume music all day long and you're going to um i don't know watch tv shows all day long you're gonna and then like like even if they were permissible but if you're gonna fulfill your fill your day and your brain with all these permissible things without any level of kind of let me at least kind of input some Islamic <laughs> information or positive Islamic influence into my brain right then the output is going to be this the same thing you're not going to have that commitment you are going to find practicing difficult you are going to find like mm -hmm. reading the quran difficult or whatever it is mm -hmm. um so i think a lot of people have to realize that if you're going to spend an hour scrolling through instagram reels mm -hmm. and i've been guilty of it in the past i admit but mm -hmm. it's like you then realize that do you know what, actually there's an impact there and it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen straight away it happens over time but it affects your yeah. thinking it affects your doing yeah. it affects your yeah. speaking yeah. um so yeah, if, if if you have an aspiration to stay steadfast, the number one problem, and especially given we live in the era of short form media, be it okay. tweets, be it reels, be it shorts, um, you've got to be aware of what you're consuming, how you're consuming it, yes. and how much of it you're consuming. If you are able to find, uh, if you're exposed, able to expose yourself to kind of small portions of permissible entertainment then um, that's fine that's that's not an issue right. it's when it becomes excessive and then when that permissible entertainment starts becoming impermissible um yeah. and it doesn't you're not going to go from kind of permissible entertainment to zina straight away you're going to mm -hmm. kind of gradually build up so yeah. and like we said the more you the more you do the little things the more susceptible you can you, you become yeah absolutely and it's yeah it's a it's a um yeah it's interesting um, but it was nice to know, Alhamdulillah, I wasn't the only person that was horrified by that music. So <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Um, we talked about steadfastness and how it wanes from person to person, place to place. I thought that was really interesting. Steadfastness, you know, if you're the only Muslim in your community, being steadfast is, looks very different than if you are in, I don't know, Oman. Yeah. Or Mauritania. Yeah. So those are different, different communities, vastly different communities. And so I think your steadfastness um, looks different to different people. Yeah. And which is another thing is, is this idea of judging other people based on, well, I'm this way. So you should also be this way, but you don't know what the other person is going through or what they're sure. dealing with, or, or maybe that is, maybe they are being steadfast. You just don't know it because yeah, you, from right. your point of view, you think, well, I'm from Mauritania. This is how we do things. Sure, and it's sure. like, yeah, but I'm from LA and that's not how, in, in my community, this is how we do things, you know? Yeah. And so um, I think being mindful of other people. Um, sure. And like, so for example, let's say you live in Saudi Arabia you, you and like your entire family prays five times a day, your entire community prays five times a day mm -hmm. and everyone prays Jummah. You praying five times a day isn't a struggle. Right. It, it isn't your shouldn't be your measure of steadfastness, right? That's right. That's but if right. you're like a convert in Napoli and you're the only Muslim in the community, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then um, yeah, then you being able to pray five times a day is a measure of steadfastness because yeah. it's like that's the that's the difficult. It's like um, if you ever play video games and they have like difficulty levels. Okay. Each person's. Uh, level of achievement with that game is going to be different dependent upon how comfortable they are and how easy they find that mm. find it. the other person's achievement isn't diminished because they were doing it on an easier difficulty it just means that that was their level that's right um and Allah is going to take this into account and like every person's going to be judged on 
what their level was, what their environment was, what their upbringing was, their uh, like their ability, their access to knowledge, the environment mm-hmm. they were, the, their ease of being able to escape from that environment. Because for some people, they can't escape. Like I know well, plenty yeah. of converts that still live in their parents' <laughs> household to non of non-Muslims, and they have a challenge. That's right, absolutely. And I think that uh, that was one of my biggest challenges before I was con- I converted is that living in the you know the quote unquote West, which I still technically do, but living amongst you know um, people going to the bar. I mean, I was still a bartender, and yet I had felt in my heart I'm like, okay, Islam is right for me. But it took me years to get to where I am today. And so, yes, I was pray. I wasn't praying, doing salah, but I was you know praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it wasn't the same that we would pray now where we have, you know, okay. specific ways. It's that like, we... even, even like people say, oh, like, oh, we'll just make hijra. It's like, well, yeah, I'd love to, but it's it's not, yeah. it's not that easy than just being able to say, well, do you want to just make hijra? And yeah. some people do, and do you want credit to them? Yeah. And absolutely. They are absolutely 100% commended. Um, I think it was Musab ibn Umair, one of the companions of the Prophet also was a very young companion. Okay. And he this and in Mecca he decided to convert. And before his conversion, he was like a hot shot. He was a celebrity. He was rich. Oh, wow. He was well known. Wow. He was like wore the best clothing. He mm-hmm. he was known for not wearing more um a piece of clothing more than once. As in he'd wow. wear it once and then kind of like dispose of it or kind of give it to someone else. Like that's the wow. level of wealth. And he converted to Islam, and he was cut off. And right. the only thing he had, his only possessions, were the clothes that he was wearing. Wow. Um, and he just committed to it, and then yeah, he made hijra, and then like his his life continued, and he ended he ended up dying as a as a martyr in one of the wars. But it's like mm. he was able to have that level of commitment where he just, um, he just gave up the all every absolutely everything from that higher level. And um, and yeah, he just committed to Islam. On the other hand, you have someone like uh, Najashi, who was the the leader of Abyssinia, okay, who never publicly declared his Islam, and oh. it was a secret only to him. Um, wow. And so it was it was kind of like their their struggles was different. That that yeah. you could yeah. both of them were steadfast, right? But they did so in their own way. Now. A mm-hmm. naive person could say, "Well, why didn't Najashi just declare his Islam publicly and whatnot?" And it's like that was his decision. And the Prophet actually prayed a janazah prayer for him when he found out he passed away from Medina. They never met. The oh, Prophet yeah. and Najashi had never met, but the Prophet prayed a janazah prayer for him when he found out he died in Abyssinia. Wow. You're not going to tell me that he wasn't steadfast in his deen. Right, yeah, right, right. Musab ibn Umair was also steadfast in his deen and it manifested differently. differently. So I think there definitely needs to be mm-hmm. an understanding of everybody's level of steadfastness is different. It's yeah. going to, like, and from the outside looking in, is there going to be elements of that person's steadfastness that they can prove? Of course there is. Course. However, there has to be a recognition of that each person is on their individual journey. As long as mm-hmm. there is an intention to be the best Muslim that you can be. The the hadith we, we've talked about a few times is about aspiring, don't overwhelm yourself, but aspire towards excellence. Right, right. And that's right, the, right. the attitude that we need to um that we need to uh have and adopt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we all have our own struggles and we all have our own journey and we're all kind of right. trying to progress to the best of our ability. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's all that's part of being know thyself, but also being honest with yourself. And I think that it's like, well, could I have done that better? You know, like I always grade my prayer. I'm like, oh, I could have done better on that one. You know, you know, I give myself a B minus on that. You know what I mean? It like you think, okay, how can I make this better? So then you prepare for the next prayer. Like, okay, this is what, you know, make sure I turn my phone on to sleep. You know, that would be convenient, you know? And it's just those constant reminders of yourself. Like, okay, phone's off okay, everything's ready. I'm actually waiting for the prayer to start. Like, no, as opposed to, you know, oh, my alarm went off, you know, 50, I have my alarm set for 15 to 20 minutes before so that I can focus, do my wudu, mm-hmm. um, and then get ready for my prayer, change my clothes and get ready. But, you know, so it's like, there's like almost like a checklist that you have to do before. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes, Oh, coming in late from the grocery store, you're like, Oh my gosh. And then you're rushing around and you're like, yeah. Whoa, 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 Whoa. And then you're unfocused. On it you're like, 
did I, did I get the blueberries? Like, you know what I mean? And that's, that's, a, that's a really frustrating because then you're like, oh, I, I don't want to be doing that. So having, knowing yourself and then realizing like, I'm also human. Like I'm, I'm allowed to yeah. make mistakes, you know, cause we are allowed to make, make mistakes okay. and then ask for forgiveness and then say, okay, I can do better. I know I can do better. So how do I do this? How do I, you know, go step back and say, well, I know I cannot get to the grocery store and back in 35 minutes because who knows what might pop up at the grocery store. There might be a long line. Okay. You know what? I'm going to wait until after my prayer and then go and then just make sure my list is double check, do some dicker, wait, you know, be ready on your prayer mat before the, the, the prayer starts. And then you're going to feel so much better praying. And then also the grocery store, the rest of your day, the grocery store experience is even better. Mm -hmm. uh, inshallah. And then, and then it just sort of sets the pace for the rest of the day. So it's, it's knowing themselves and being honest with yourself is like, okay, that was, that was a fail that today was a fail, but tomorrow might be a better day. Inshallah. You know, they, um, uh, someone came up to the prophet and said, uh, when I'm in your presence, I feel my mind is very high. My, my, my level of belief is very high. But when, I, um, when I'm not in your presence, I feel like uh, my mind is very low and mm. ask the Prophet if I'm a hypocrite. And the Prophet said to him that if, you, if you're able to maintain your high level of mind all the time, the angels would come down and shake your hand. <laughs> as, as in, like it's human to wow. ebb and flow and go up and down. That's and, right. And that's the thing, yeah. I think I've, that's I've, yeah, that's really I've, important, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I've said this a hundred times, and I and I'm and I'll I'll die by this mm -hmm. this mantra of as long as you woke up with um a, with breath, you have mm -hmm. the ability to rectify the mistakes that you committed right. yesterday. That's right. So don't ever hesitate to ask for forgiveness. Don't mm -hmm. um ever think that your sin determines who you are or determines the direction that you're heading in right as long as you can breathe you have an opportunity to ask forgiveness and yeah. you go again um <laughs> if uh i saw i um i was, I was listening to a, i think it was a, a basketball player and he said that um just because they didn't win the championship doesn't mean it's failure Right, exactly. But growing towards an objective and growing towards trying to achieve something that you're wanting to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, so when we, uh, I mean, like, we'll talk about sin in another, in another episode, but, like, sure. we are going to sin, we are going to make mistakes, and it's just about not letting it bog you down too much because that's what the shit wants. That's right. And doing your best to kind of move on and improve and make, like you said, the practical steps and changes to mm -hmm. help you try adopt the religion in a better way. That's right. And I think that that's, you know, especially important, like if you're a journaler, if you're able to journal, how was the day? How could I have done better? What was a win? You know, and you should celebrate your wins in, in halal ways. And so, you know, it's like, oh, actually I did do that. Oh, I was actually waiting for the prayer to start. Okay. That's a good thing. And then being like, okay, cool. It might not be like that tomorrow. Don't get so hard on yourself and also realize like, you know, we all have that opportunity to, you know, seek repentance and, and, uh, and it's okay to be needy on your prayer mat. <laughs> it's probably the only place to be needy. Um, it's, um, it's the place to be needy. If you're going to be needy. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's like, nobody wants to hear your, <laughs> you complaining except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so, and you can be um, honest, like, I, I screwed up today. So let's, let's make this tomorrow a better day. But journaling is a big thing is it, it, for many people, I think is yeah. it's very helpful, a helpful tool yeah. to sort of implement, even just, you don't have to have a book and, and a key and a lock, you know, yeah. just a post-it note. Okay. Tomorrow let's do this. Let's do this. Let's set my alarm, make sure my alarms are set for the prayers, stuff like that. Well, there's, um, there's a, a sunnah called, um, I believe the word is Mahasaba and the idea is self accountants. Oh, the idea that you, uh, on an evening, you look back at your day and be like, hmm. "Was I going close to all this month? Or was I going further away? Like, yeah. what was? And where the triggers go in one direction or the other? Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. people talk about journaling as if it's this kind of new concept, but the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam <laughs> encourages us to reflect on our day yeah. um, since the time of the Prophet. So, since his time, so no, absolutely, keeping yourself to account, reflecting upon what you did right, what you did wrong, mm -hmm. is absolutely one hundred percent the way. Um, and it's also a productive way to end your day, right? So because it's 
you know, sitting there on, you know, God forbid, Netflix or, or yeah. whatever, Amazon Prime, spend the last 10 minutes of your day reflecting. It's like, did I do my dicker? Did I do this? Did I not do this? And then doing that, sure. you, you know, and then preparing for the next day. Okay, let's make sure I'm up. Is the alarm set for Fudger? Is the alarm set for this stuff? And yeah, I think that's an incredible you know, and I know, yeah, people say journaling is a, a new, a new quote unquote new yeah. age thing, and, but it's, yeah. and I know we're going to be close to wrapping up, but just like it goes back to what I was talking about earlier about kind of like overconsumption of media and distractions. That mm. if you're not going to give yourself the time to switch off and reflect, if you're constantly just going to fill your brain, your eyes, and your ears with some kind of consumption or content, mm -hmm. you're never going to give your heart and your brain an opportunity to reflect and take That's into right. account so I, again I, I know it's easy but it's easy to say and it's much harder to do but we should try do our best to not overly think um not, not overly consume we think of actually giving our brain a time to think and the knock-on effect is that like it's not possible for you to pray like be watching tv stop watching tv pray your salah there and then and then carry on watching TV and expect your salah to be of good quality. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, like, the idea of doing wudu, praying your sunnahs is like helping you getting yourself into the zone to the point where when you are praying, you're doing it to the to the best of your ability. Yeah. But if you're not going to switch off, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, um, and you know, and what does it say? As many times in the Quran, it's like this world is a distraction, and it really now, I mean, like you just said, this short form content is insane. People don't have, you know, I was watching a, a Ramadan vlog from last year and um, and she said, oh yeah, I'm addicted to short form content. And I'm like, she's like, I have no, I have no, um, what's it called? Uh, where you can concentrate for long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. Attention, she, span. attention span. Thank you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. She's like, yeah, I have no attention span anymore. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's insane. She's like, yeah, TikTok. It's like people, you know, scrolling on TikTok and just... It's the dopamine hit, right? Yeah. It's like okay, but yeah, it's it's actually kind of scary. Um, but so we, as we get towards the end, mm -hmm. we agreed that we were going to come up with some kind of <clears throat> practical implementation oh. for our theme um, mm -hmm. of of the episode. Mm -hmm. And I think in, I, I, and I think the practical <clears throat> step to take because this isn't meant to be just talking it's about meant yeah. to change thought but also meant to do some action um right. so my thought was with this specific episode is a a, a dua that's referenced in the quran mm. um and it's surah al-imran surah number mm. three ayah 147 and the translation mm. of the dua is our lord forgive us our sins and our transgressions establish our feet firmly and give us victory over the disbelieving folk. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I think mm -hmm. that anyone who's wanting to adopt steadfastness into their lives um, should recite this Dua regularly. Mm -hmm. And if you're, and you're, if you're like, do you know what? I'm struggling to stay consistent with my prayers or I'm struggling to stay consistent with avoiding things that I should be avoiding or, I'm struggling to stay consistent with reading my Quran. Mm. There is a dua for every uh, problem or issue or challenge that we're facing. And as far as steadfastness goes, this is one of the main duas that we should read. So I'd encourage every listener and watcher to mm. um, uh, um, recite this dua. And I'm, it, when the video of this podcast goes up, I'm sure we can put the dua on the screen Absolutely. and we can yeah. reference it in the... Uh, mm -hmm uh audio description in the description for the for the episode inshallah so i, I thought we'd it'd be good to end on that note absolutely and i think um alhamdulillah for that so it's um surah 3 uh, verse ayah 147 and i think right. what's also really interesting about that dua is at the very next um ayah uh 3148 is so allah gave them the reward of this world and the good reward of the hereafter and allah loves the doers of good um, and that's sort of our motivation, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hundred percent. It's like, and then so Allah, Allah is saying that when you stay steadfastness, when you stay steadfast, this is going to be the consequence. That's right. That's right. So we should use that as our motivation for staying steadfast. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Harris. I really appreciate no, the conversation. Thank you. And our next episode, uh, this will inshallah be um, uh, be uploaded on Friday, which is what's the date? February 9th, 2024. Um, inshallah. And then um, Actually, I don't. Do we know what the next episode is going to be about? We don't. It, we'll, we'll leave that as a surprise. We'll, we'll figure <laughs> out. Um, okay. You mentioned about where people can find updates about the podcast specifically. Okay, so they can find us on Instagram, inshallah, and YouTube, Steadfast Soul, and I can put the link in the description box. And um, inshallah, and where can they find you on Instagram? And oh, on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at Ali Forza on all the social medias. Sure. platforms and you harris and i'm on uh, x and instagram at harris gtj um and then inshallah we look forward to having another episode wonderful inshallah. thanks everyone so okay. salamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu the ending okay there we go